Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands in your name. I lift my hands up into your name i lift my hands up unto your name my lips shall praise you thus will i bless you i will lift up my hands in your name let's lift our hands up unto your name come on and join me Let's lift our hands up unto your name. Our lips shall praise you, thus will I bless you. We will lift up our hands in your name. Oh yes, let's lift up our hands and praise the one who gave his life for you and me. Welcome to the reading of the word on September 19. September 19, we are reading from Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, Yermiahu. And we will pick up with verse 12. We will pick up with verse 12. Please go see Kathy's graphics. Please don't miss them. She's worked hard to put them all together. Melissa has worked hard to keep putting them out there. All you got to do is touch it, simple as can be, and enjoy. So hallelujah to each and every one of you brothers and sisters. I love you with the love of the Lord. <clears throat> Let us get right into Isaiah 30, picking up with verse 12. Therefore, Isaiah tells them, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perversity and rely on them. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you like a breach ready to fall, a bulge in a high wall whose breaking comes suddenly in an instant, and he shall break it like the breaking of the potter's vessel, which is broken in pieces he shall not spare so there shall not be found among its fragments a shard to take fire from the hearth or to take water from the cistern for thus says the lord god the holy one of israel in returning and rest you shall be saved and, oh, that is such a good word. And it's easy to do. The Lord has not made it hard to come back into his presence and worship him. Just bring your heart and return it. Get on your knees. Tell him you're sorry for your sins. Name them if you can. And I'm sure you can. We all can the things that trip us up, and then ask him to wipe it all away in his blood, to forgive you for all your sins. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and your Savior. He will. He's waiting for you to do this. And then ask him to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, completely knowing it, and having the expression in prayer of tongues. In other words, a language you did not learn, it is given instantly to you on your lips as a power in prayer. A way to pray for all the things that you don't know need prayer. Please don't miss it. In returning and rest, you shall be saved in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not, Isaiah tells him, 
Well, let's not us in this generation be like that generation. And you said, no, for we will flee on horses. Therefore, you shall flee, and we will ride on swift horses, riding away from the blessing. Therefore, those who pursue you shall be swift. One thousand shall flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you shall flee. Till you are left as a pole on top of a mountain and as a banner on a hill. Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore, he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner any more, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left, you will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornament of your molded images of gold. You will throw them away as an unclean thing. You will say to them, get away. And then he will give you the rain for your seed with which you sow the ground and bread of the increase of the earth. It will be fat and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will feed in large pastures. Likewise, the oxen and the young donkeys that work the ground will eat cured fodder, which has been winnowed with the shovel and fan. There will be on every high mountain and on every high hill rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fail and fall. Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold as the light of seven days. In the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger, and his burden is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue like a devouring fire. His breath is like an overflowing stream which reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of futility. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people causing them to err, E-R-R, -R. causing you to err. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy festival is kept and gladness of heart as when one goes with a flute to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. He's the mighty one of Israel. He's the mighty one of Israel. His voice shall be heard in the power of his word. He's the mighty one of Israel. Yes. The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard and show the descent of his arm with the indignation of his anger and the flame of a devouring fire with scattering tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord, Assyria will be beaten down as he strikes with the rod 
and in every place where the staff of punishment passes, which the Lord lays on him. It will be with tambourines and harps, and in battles of brandishing he will fight with it. For Tophet was established of old. Look that up. T-O-P-H-E-T. Look it up. Yes, for the king it is prepared. He has made it deep and large. Its pyre is fire with much wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, kindles it. No, picture that. Picture that. And we move right along with chapter 31 of Yeshayahu, Isaiah, right after I have a nice sip. And let me make an announcement. I'm drinking out of this cup. Those of you might know this insignia. It is the one that the wonderful, wonderful Christian television station TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Company, has used now since way back in the 70s, 1970s. And they have produced a wonderful, wonderful movie that I understand is showing in a thousand theaters last night and tonight. And then I don't know I whether it'll be back. They're, they're, I think they're hoping that there'll be a crowd and they can move along with it. Beautifully, beautifully done. And it is called Route 60. And it is the main highway that goes right down the middle of Israel. The whole length. Beautifully told. Beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. Two men telling it to each other. And you know both of the men. Look it up. Okay, Mike Pompeo is one of them. And they tell this beautiful story and show the word of God. You Don't miss it, please. It, it, it's just beyond excellent. All right, we move right along to chapter 31. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong but who do not look to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring disaster and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of those who work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall, and he who is helped will fall down. They will all perish together. For thus the Lord has spoken to me. And then he continues with what has been spoken. And it's a quote. As a lion roars and a young lion over his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. So the Lord of hosts will come down to fight for Mount Zion and for its hill, like birds flying about so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will also deliver it. Passing over, he will preserve it. Return to him against whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day, every man shall throw away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, sin, which your own hands have made for yourselves. And then Assyria shall fall by a sword, not of man. A sword, not of man. Must be in the hand of the Lord then. 
and a sword not of mankind shall devour him, but he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall become forced labor. He shall cross over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the banner, says the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. And we move right along to chapter 32. Chapter 32. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness and princes will rule with justice. A man will be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. The eyes of those who see will not be dim, and the ears of those who hear will listen. Also the heart of the rash will understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers will be ready to speak plainly. The foolish person will no longer be called generous, for the miser said to be bountiful. Oh, that will be a good day, won't it? For the foolish person will speak foolishness, and his heart will work iniquity to practice ungodliness, to utter error against the Lord, to keep the hungry unsatisfied. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Also the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words. Even when the needy speaks justice, but a generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. Rise up. You women who are at ease, hear my voice. You complacent daughters, give ear to my speech. In a year and some days you will be troubled, you complacent women, for the vintage will fail, the gathering will not come. Tremble, you women who are at ease. Whoa, Isaiah is really spitting out what God is going to do. Be troubled. You complacent ones, strip yourselves, make yourselves bare, and gird sackcloth on your waists. People shall mourn upon their breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. On the land of my people will come up thorns and briars. Yes, on all the happy homes in the joyous city, because the palaces will be forsaken. The bustling city will be deserted. The forts and towers will become lairs forever. A joy of wild donkeys, a pasture of flocks, until the spirit is poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. And the fruitful field is counted as a forest. And then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness will be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Though hail comes down on the forest and the city is brought low in humiliation. Blessed are you who sow beside all waters, who send out freely the feet of the ox and the donkey. And we move right along. <clears throat> <clears throat> pardon me, to chapter 33 of Yeshayahu, Isaiah, Isaiah, chapter 33. Woe to you who plunder 
though you have not been plundered, and you deal treacherously, though they have not dealt treacherously with you. When you cease plundering, you will be plundered. When you make an end of dealing treacherously, they will deal treacherously with you. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you, but their arm every morning, be their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, the nations shall be scattered and your plunder shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar as the running to and fro of locusts. He shall run upon them. The Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Surely their valiant ones shall cry outside. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highways lie waste. The traveling man ceases. He has broken the covenant. He has despised the cities. He regards no man. The earth mourns and languishes. Lebanon is ashamed and shriveled. Sharon is like a wilderness and Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits. Wow. What a severe word Isaiah was told by the Lord. We move right along to the New Testament. If you would please, in your Bible, turn to the right and find yourself in the back, the wonderful little epistle of Galatians. Galatians, this message to these people. And we will read today chapter 5. Galatians 5. So after all of this instruction and wisdom, Paul says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing, and I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. And nobody's ever been able to do that and not break it. That's why Jesus was sent. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. By faith they're waiting. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, then why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. 
I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. Wow, listen up. Every single word of that is potent and good for our lives today. Now we will turn back left in our Bibles and go to Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Another Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Oh God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. Yes, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you, thus will I bless you. I will lift up my hands in your name. Well, let's lift our hands up unto his name. Let's lift our hands up unto your name, Jesus. My lips shall praise you, thus will I bless you. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Oh, what a wonderful day that will be. And we move right along here and wrap up today's reading with Proverbs 23, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Short and very sweet. Very sweet there. Good words on how to treat your parents. And I am fortunate to be able to say all of my children treat me and treated their father very, very lovingly and beautifully and with respect. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. <clears throat> Precious Father God, the only way we can come to you, we do. We come in your Son, Jesus Christ. We come with our souls embedded in him. Precious Lord, please hear our thanksgivings and our prayers please. We bow our spirits before you, Lord. And right away, 
Our desire is to please you and pray for Jerusalem. This special city set high on a hill. And this is where Jesus will come back and his foot will touch the Mount of Olives, exactly where he picked it up and left. And then he will rule and reign here from Jerusalem forever, forever, Lord. We have your word right in our heart. He will rule the nations and the earth forever from Jerusalem. And so, Lord, our hearts and our prayers are drawn to Jerusalem, this city that has been fought over for generations and generations and still will be. The end times are not finished yet. But precious Lord, your hand, your hand is over your special city. Your hand is with your people. And many more are coming home today, every day, planes landing, other ways of transportation, by boat, by car, many ways, by bus. Precious Father, we'd ask that you would Allow peace to be in your city today. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, a peace upon her people, peace everywhere. Father God, we saw so much last night in this movie of your special city, Jerusalem. Oh my, six wonderful trips you've allowed me to go and I'm believing for another one. Precious Lord, Please protect your people. Protect Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and give him wisdom, Lord. Give him wisdom with all the knowledge that you've given him and with all the military training. You have, you have raised him up to be a very strong, strong leader. And we thank you for him. Precious God, use him in a, a marvelous way today. Father, move the hand of the Knesset to do good works for the people of the land of Israel. Please, Lord, cause them to come together in agreement and be wise in their decisions. Precious Father, I turn my attention to America, this land that I love, this country where I was born and lived still am. And precious Father, at the moment, this land is in evil hands. And I'd ask, precious God, that all of their works would be totally exposed. That all these people who are deceived would wake up and see that good things are not being done. And we are in What shall we say? We are in trouble with you, Lord. Please, Lord. We are believing for righteousness to rise up strong. Belief in you and following you strong. The body of Christ stronger than ever. More people than ever coming to you. It is a time of a great return, a great repentance, a great revival and restoration, all those beautiful R words. Please, Lord, we pray. Please let today come closer to every one of those words in everyone's heart. Lord, I repent of my sins publicly. Publicly, Lord, I repent of my sins. And I'd ask Jesus, you would wash them away with your precious blood. Wash my black sins white and clean with the red blood that you shed on Calvary. 
Please, Lord, let me be clean today. Let me walk a righteous path with you. Precious Father, we thank you for our lives. We thank you for all the many blessings and goodness you have given us for years. And Lord, we hold up those who do not have. We hold up those across this earth who are very poor, who are ill, who are suffering from disease. They're suffering from heat. They're suffering from cold. They're suffering from lack of food, lack of water, lack of nourishment, lack of supply. Precious God, please let many ministries and people come and rescue those in such need. Let them love on them and bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ that they might be born again that they might be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, that they might come to you and live every day afterwards now in your presence, looking forward to coming home to you, to heaven one day. Precious God, only you know that day that you will bring each one of us home. For some, it could be today. So Lord, we turn to you with all our hearts right now while we can, for we want to be ready when you call us home. Precious Lord, I'd ask that you'd hear the prayers of all of your sons and daughters here today. Many are praying for many, many things, many events, many members of their family who do not know you yet or are in trouble in some way. They're praying for prisoners of sons and daughters. They're praying for sons and daughters who have been far away for a long time. They're praying earnestly that the lost and those who ran away <clears throat> in rage or anger or some, something that caused them to do it, bring them back home, Lord. Bring them in repentance and let them forgive and let those who receive them forgive. <clears throat> Lord, we are believing you will strengthen all of the families in Christ. Strengthen them. Father God, we thank you for the fall feasts in Jerusalem and in Israel. Lord, we thank you for their joy at the Feast of Tabernacles. Precious God, We'd ask that you would build your people up, bring your people home, and we will rejoice. All of God's people went ahead with your own prayers, cried hearty amens, sang praise songs unto him, and went ahead and had a beautiful day in the Lord. I love you all so very much. Amen and amen.